Hi folks, welcome back for another exciting video. It's that time of year where we all have to put away our stuff. Um, and it's particular, I'm going to show you guys how I set up a, um, I'm going to use a Sears tractor as an example uh, to get through the winter. Unfortunately, I have to store it outside. I, I don't have an indoor storage spot for it. So I'm going to go, th go through the few things I do, which come spring, the tractor will be in better condition. It would be in its best condition if I was able to store it in a garage that kept it at approximately 55 degrees all winter. But that space I do not have available, so I need to store it outside. And let me show you what I'm up to. First thing I do, um, and I have these covered because I'm still having a certain amount of trouble with the bots. And I'm just trying to understand what they're getting me for, so I figure I'll cover some labels. What I do is I put in a quarter ounce of this stuff, and you guys could guess what it is. And then I put in a quarter ounce of this stuff, right? I have a couple of these extra cans empty. So basically a half ounce between the two of them. I put that in here, and then I fill it the rest of the way with gas, gasoline. And I bring it right on out um, to whatever I'm storing for the winter. And let's, let me show you the Sears um, tractor. So that's the first thing I do. So I bring the can out, set it right there. Second thing I do, I take the gasoline out of the tank. I pull as much out of there as I can. And you guys could see I've done a couple of these and there's quite a bit of gas in here. I've already done a review of this Hoyt um, fluid extractor, so you guys could go take a look at it, um, see one of my earlier videos. So anyway, I pull the gas out, and then I put enough of this in so that I make sure that the engine is um, going to take it in through the fuel uh, tap on the bottom of um, the gas tank. I start it up and I let it run and believe it or not you could kind of smell it a little bit when this is going through the carburetor I mean you don't have to put your nose right up against the exhaust but you could kind of kind of tell uh, it's got a little bit of a sweeter smell to it so anyway I let it run until I'm convinced that that is now throughout the gas tank and the carburetor. I mean, you could give it a couple of shakes also to make sure it washes up on the walls of the tank. That never hurts. Hopefully I have the tractor where I want to store it by this point. I put the gas cap back on, close down the hood, and I'm done with the engine for now. I go around back and you could see if you have like a half, uh, an 80 inch block and a piece of wood, you can kind of get behind the tractor and with two hands kind of lift it up, back it up, and set it right down on there. So now the back wheels are off the ground. You really want to do that because I find, uh, especially if the tractor has a few years on it, and especially with the newer compounds they're making the tires out of, they don't seem to survive very well sitting on the ground um, uh, during the winter. Um, I don't know if the minerals in the soil get into the tire and that causes them to crack or um, some of the elastic stuff comes out of the tire and goes into the soil and that causes them to crack or if the hot and cold freezing weather sunlight on and on and on causes them to crack but no matter what I try to get the tires off the ground and um, make them so that they're round. In the front, this is pretty easy to do. You can see I, um, I put a board completely across the front there. It is approximately 21 inches. Then I set it up so the jack easily jacks up the center of the board. And I propped it up on a couple of pieces of wood, right? 
So this makes it so you could see the front end is also unloaded. Just two more things. I personally, um, if the battery's good or even if it's bad, I like to take them out. The good batteries I store um, in one place and the, um, the bad ones I kind of store outside. When it comes to this size battery, obviously, obviously if it's good, you should um, keep it warm, put it on a float charger, or at least charge it up back up to full potential every couple of weeks. And if you do that, you might actually even get two seasons out of a battery instead of just one. <coughs> when it comes to scrapping batteries, <coughs> excuse me, if they're small like this, um, I normally kind of keep them around and I turn them back in when, um, you, you know, the, here in New York, they charge you a recycling fee. They want you to bring the battery back if you buy a new one. They want you to bring the used one back. So I normally try to turn in the um, smaller ones for the recycling fee and the bigger ones that come out of the cars or trucks or wherever I get them. Um, I normally bring those to the scrapyard because typically uh, they pay you more than the five bucks that you're going to get. So um, I even keep around some of the gel cell motorcycle batteries and all that other stuff. And once again, I, I typically try to turn those in for the five dollar recycling fee. And when it comes to scrap metal fee, I try to try to turn in the bigger batteries. So at this point you have it off the ground you have stabilizer in the gas and you have the battery out of it you close it all up and you cover it um i've been using these things these are um can separators um my son um this is this is a bad one it's no longer any good so i kind of bring them home and i recycle them um, as as covers I mean you could set them up with a tarp to cover them I do recommend cleaning out underneath the deck there and you want to do that for a couple of reasons first of all that grass um, will keep moisture right up against the metal which makes it rust secondly um, that stuff sometimes as as the grass and all um, um, decomposes to become nice fertile soil sometimes it produces um, enzymes bacteria all that other stuff that loves metal so that'll promote rust <coughs> and lastly um, it's a ready source of re um, nesting material for all of our friendly critters including insects and everything else so you really want to get it out of there when you go to start it up in the spring I would assume that a mouse moved into the engine compartment. There are things you could do with that. Some people, you know, put mothballs all around the interior engine compartment. Some people use dryer, um, you know, those things you throw in the dryer, um, dryer paper, let's call it, you know, to put the scent in your clothes. Supposedly mice don't like those. And a good buddy of mine, Captain, um, the captain, let's just call him the captain, um, he recommends peppermint oil. Um, I, I don't know, I'm not, I'm not thinking any of those things will retain their, um, their smell through the winter and I'm not coming out to renew it. So I just assume a mouse moved in and I, I take the cover off and take a quick look in there before I get started for the winter. Um, do yourself a favor, make sure there's an air cleaner in there. You might say, oh, I'll put it in in the spring. You might forget and then run it for half the season without the air cleaner and hurt your motor. Or you might provide ready access for the mouse to get further into your carburetor. Plus all those scents of um, mouse droppings and all kind of acidic and you don't want that messing you up. And you can see this engine really should come apart. I think it just inhaled leaves here, but no matter what, that's just, you, you just want to make sure that your, your engine is breathing completely so that it doesn't overheat. So this is what I, I do when I'm trying to keep a tractor um, alive season to season, 
keep the battery alive, make it so I don't have to mess with the carburetor too much. So in the spring, it's pretty quick, right? I just make sure I got nothing living in it, take it apart and all that. Typically, the engine will fire right up. The battery's all ready to go because it's warm and charged from the winter. I just have to make sure the, the, um, the bearings are still or the spindles are still free um, and everything else is still good. I normally leave them in neutral. I'm not sure why, um, but it is it is wise to, to cover them up. You don't realize some water could ride down in here, and over the years, water could get into your transaxle during the winter year. That could freeze and break things on you, and you don't want that. Even, I, I like to get them up in the air a little bit. I just get the idea they drain a little better, lets a little more air under the deck and everything else. Um, particularly the tires. You really want to keep the tires round. Sitting on tires all winter, you end up with a, a flat spot and then the, the tire cracks and then now you're popping for a tire. Minimum tire, I don't know, these are somewhere around 20 bucks each, those are around 30 bucks each. So if every year you lose a tire or so, you're 50 into that and oh, lost a battery too and that's money and all. Uh, those of you who say the battery's dead, the heck with it, I'll just leave it in there. Um, a dead battery could freeze and crack, and now you're kind of dripping um, corrosive liquid um, onto your transaxle, onto your pulleys, and so forth. Um, just get the battery out of it, it's the best thing to do. All right, folks, I want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. Please keep your feet down, keep your heads up, and get out there and enjoy all your days. Bye now.